Okay, this is the Siemens MXL fire alarm control panel. Big deal of the 1990s and the early to mid 2000s before the arrival of the Siemens XLS, sometimes uh, formerly known as the Siemens Firefinder XLS, and now it is actually referred to as Siemens DeSego panel. Uh, if it's being installed by the branch offices or if it's being installed by a Siemens distributor, then it is named the Cerberus Pro panel. So this panel has been off the market for a good few years now, and as of this year, all of the field devices that were compatible with this panel have been discontinued, so we are in the process of getting this panel phased out. But you still see a lot of them out there, so let's go ahead and take a look and get you familiar with this panel if you have never really operated one of these before or if you are wanting to learn more about them don't know much about them and you want to learn more we have base our basic operator functions right here operator keys a little keypad here um functions here for if we want to disable something like a strobe disarm or disarm doors you know if you're doing some testing and then you know you can get into the menu by hitting the enter button you can see and then i can scroll through and access different functions in the menu uh, list control test there's a walk test feature with this panel uh, you do have to have the login code in order to access it here and then you know just the basic stuff the alarm audible silence obviously these are the main keys that the fire department uses and the uh, building personnel would be using supervisory trouble security and partial system disabled basically just tells you when the device has been disabled or out of service you can see, yeah again all the different keys here so function you can have function one or if you want to function in the alter alternate function or alternate function number two you got options for that as well you can kind of see how that works going to look here in the main panel you can see we have our all of our different cards here these are actually going to be our xld1 cards these are used to communicate devices that were installed previously so these are basically um, used to communicate with devices that weren't installed with this system originally long time ago that were part of the old siemens xl3 system so these cards basically right here we have a lot of those devices on this system and these cards basically communicate basically as an interface uh, with those old devices from the old XL3 system here and that's what we got here and then they are all connected into this card here in the back what we call the mom 4 card and that is basically what is connecting these devices to the build devices out them you can see all of our loops come off here on the mom board and they go out and talk to the devices out in the field and this is basically connects with these cards the devices and then the um main board here behind the uh, screen which is as I can see if you open up here the MMB3 this is basically the main board you can see we got our ribbon cable right here we got our 120 back uh, power supply that comes in right through here and then um, yeah this is the, the main board going down got more of these XLD3 cards you can see coming as we go down a little bit and give you a good look at the system here just to kind of show you some stuff so it's good to as we come in here and see the xld again the xld1 cards here we also have an ald card here as well or some of the newer devices newer mxl devices and they communicate here and all going back here to these mom boards right here and uh these are all the cards that are supervising and constantly talking to the devices that are out in the field. More ribbon cables. And then this is our network interface card. This is one out of uh, multiple systems that are on a NCC a network command center. This is our network card, the NEM-1W card right here, our network card. This is basically what's keeping this panel connected to the network but you know even if you removed the network card um 
the system will then just operate as a standalone system that won't have any effect on the actual system itself, just a communication to the network. So these are all our cards here. We also have some uh, CRM4 cards down here. You can see smaller ones here. These are basically relay cards that connect to uh, some of the relay, relay modules and for output and relay devices as well. Um, so that's a little overview of the MXL. Going over here, we have a bunch of pad panels. These are what control the NAC circuits of the field. I'll show you inside one of these. That's a basic NAC panel here. We have our input here, the communication between the MXL panel. Again, for those of you who don't know, these are called the pad three panels. That's their version here, the power supplies for NAC circuits. Coming in here to the input or communication to the panel. And then as you can see, we have all of our NAC circuits right out here. I put one, two, three, and four. So that's basically a little bit about these pad panels. This is the, again, the uh, Siemens MXL. So hope this, uh, hope this video was a little bit helpful. For those of you wanting to know a little bit about our Siemens MXL systems, Again, we have the ALD cards, which is what communicates to the some of the newer MXL devices. Then you have the XLD1 cards that communicate with devices that were uh, originally compatible with the XL3, uh, Siemens XL3 Fire Alarm System, uh, which was more, more so a panel of the 1980s. Now, obviously, we have these MXLs that are being upgraded to the DeSego or the Cerberus Pro panels. And so, if you have MXL devices that are on those panels, you basically would put these panels in. I'm sorry, you would put the DeSego or the Cerberus Pro panels in, and then you get what's called an MLC card. And the MX MLC card is what will communicate to the old MXL devices, the old MXL smoke detectors like the uh, FP11s, ILI, ILP detectors, and the um, old MSI pole stations. So those all connect in through the MLC cards if you go the migration route of putting in a new DeSego or Cerberus Pro panel while keeping the MXL devices intact. The, the downside to that is that if you have a problem with an MXL device and um, you want to upgrade that device because it's no longer working, you have to find either another MXL compatible device or you have to take that whole card, that MLC card, and upgrade it to the more, to the uh, addressable stuff that will handle the Cerberus Pro and the DeSego field devices can't think of the name of the card right off the top of my head but basically you have to upgrade that entire loop you have to upgrade that entire circuit so that it will and that would ultimately mean that you would have to upgrade all of the other MXL devices so you can't just it's not like some systems where you can just take out a simple MXL device and put up a device that's uh, compatible with the Cerberus Pro or the DeSego you know the newer smoke detectors you can't just switch them out like that you would actually have to upgrade the entire loop so that's kind of one of the things it's a little bit about a little bit of a pain in the butt about these systems but it's all part of the migration process to get the older technology out and the newer technology in again one downside is the mxl devices have all officially been discontinued so if you do decide to go the route of the Cerberus Pro DeSego and uh, you want to, instead of changing out all the field devices right away, you want to put in an MLC card or you, and then you have an MXL device that goes bad, well, you better hope that you have another MXL device in stock somewhere or you can get a uh, good quality one from somewhere else in the market because they're no longer being made or manufactured by Siemens. So that's just a little bit about these um, MXL panels. Um, hope you enjoyed the video.